Okay, so um, there he was. I got a phone call being as mine from one of the boys, and he said, Rebbe, let's learn. So, okay, great. I had a few minutes, let's learn some Torah. We started the sugya, whatever it was that we were learning at the time. And I'm hearing a lot of noise in the background. A lot of noise going on. A lot of like, uh, I don't know, it just sounded like he was busy. I said, like, you, is everything okay? Like, what are you doing? He said, like, oh, I'm in the middle of working, and I have my earbuds, and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm learning at the same time. Isn't that beautiful? That's great, right? I'm learning at the same time. This is Gavaldic. So I said to him, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk to you, and I hung up. So he called me back. He's like, hello, what's going on over here? So I said to him, what do you mean? Are you allowed to learn at the same time that you're paid to work? Is that mutter? Are you allowed to do that even? Are you allowed to spend time that you are being paid to work to do other things that are not related to your work that may take you away from what you are being paid to do? So I'd like to discuss a very, very important topic, extremely important, a topic that I feel is not talked about enough or as harsh as it should be, uh, you know, given such an incredible, uh, it, it really is incredible. I want to give you some of the basics. I've got some shvarim, some quotes, some marmakomis for the olam. Really, really special. I've done my research of the statistics that are, you know, currently available. It is important to know that is, they're dealing with something which is a halacha and shulchan aruch. This is not just a nice thing to do. When you are being paid by the hour, and this is very nagir, the guys are, you know, some guys are even leaving in the middle of this month, apparently, to go get a job somewhere else, whatever it may be. And they're being paid by hour to do things. So the question is, I heard this question, I'm going to zoom in. Rabbi, don't worry, I'll, I'll do a zoom call to the Shay. You're being paid by the hour. Are you allowed to do that? Or you're being paid to be at work for a certain amount of time. For example, you need to be there from 9 to 5. So during the time between 9 to 5, am I allowed to go along and call home and say, hi mom, is everything okay? Am I allowed to check my emails? Am I allowed to do whatever needs to be done, right? A small amount of time. Is that allowed to be done or is it not allowed to be done? That's what I want to discuss, Be'ez HaShem, today. Very, very Nagea subject. We start with the Mishnah in Bob Metziah. The Mishnah in Bob Metziah, Perik Zion, Mishnah Dalet says like this. Again, Rabbi said this subject, by the way, would require hours and hours being through all the sugyas. I'm just giving you the Roshay Prokim. I'm just giving you the surface. Zuk the Mishnah. That means if you're working with one specific fruit, food, fruit, vegetable, whatever it may be, don't eat the other thing. Okay? The reason why is because you're going to be walking from one to the other. Whatever you're oisik in, that's what you can eat. Because of course you need to eat during the day and the, the boss has to allow you to eat as well because otherwise you can't function. But only eat that which you are working in, not which you are not working in and running to the other one. Then continues the Mishnah. It's all said b'shas malacha. The Mishnah goes on to many, many different things. What we learn from this Mishnah is as follows. We learn from this Mishnah that there are two conditions that are very important when a person is being paid. By the way, just to be clear, we're not talking about like a kablan, someone that's being told, I need you to do this job, I'm paying you $1,000, do the job. Whenever you want, however you want, I don't care. That's something else, that's kablonus. What we're dealing with over here is being paid by the hour, you're being paid by the hour, or you have to be there for a certain amount of time. During that time that you are being paid, am I allowed to be Isaac and other things? So the Mishnah tells us there are two conditions that we have to know. Number one, you're only allowed to eat from the produce that you are being Isaac in, whatever you're working with in that time, rather than going backwards and forwards to a different row, to a different place in the field, which may take time. And condition number two, you can only do it Bishas Malacha while you are actually working. At no other time are you allowed to do that in order to maximize the time that you are being paid for, for your boss. Now, the Rambam, 
in his Perish of Mishnayis, the Rambam here explains that, of course, workers have to eat, right? That's okay. That is all halachas, there's Mishnayis about it, how much a boss has to give his workers to eat at different times, committing a Medina, whatever. That we're not discussing. What we are discussing is, of course, he has to give him to eat, but it has to be done during what we call downtime. During a time that he's not actively engaged in the work, otherwise he is, so to speak, causing a damage for his boss by not working at the time that he's being paid to do so. And he's not benefiting his, uh, his employer, which is very, very important. Now, that's the Rambam in, Mish in, in the Perish Mishnais. In Mishnah Torah, the Rambam brings down, the Rambam says that when it comes to a boss and a worker, it goes both ways. What does that mean? That means on one hand, and we've learned some of these halachas before, a boss is not allowed to, for example, withhold uh, payment or wages for his workers. He's not allowed to do that. He has to pay Baltolin, the Torah. He has to pay the workers on time. That is a boss's obligation. He has obligations to make sure he pays on time. He makes sure that, for example, that he pays the right amount, whatever it may be, that he has obligations says the Rambam, but it goes both ways. That means an employee, someone that's being paid, someone that's being hired, also has obligations. And those obligations are that he has to obviously show up on time, leave on time, and during the time that he's meant to be working and being paid to work, he should be working. He shouldn't be Isaac in other things whatsoever. And if he does, Lamaisa, the Rambam says, that's called Gneva, that's called Gzela, that's called stealing. Simple, black and white stealing. As I state in the Rambam, it goes both ways. Just like someone would not want to be paid late, so to the other way around, a boss wouldn't want his worker messing around at the time that he's meant to be working. So that is the basic simple halacha. Now in our terms, in our times, that means, for example, checking your phone. Like, well, what then does that have? Like, can I check my phone for a second while I'm working? I don't know, while I'm working or while I'm walking to the warehouse or while I'm walking back from the warehouse or just for a second, just give me a second, I just want to check my phone. Like, is that okay? Is that permitted? So I went to have a look at some of the, you know, latest statistics of how many people check their phones. And we've discussed this at numerous times, if you remember, especially during, I think, Shovavim, we discussed some of these things. But I tried to do a latest, I just, just, just this morning, try to get through some of these things. So first of all, it is brought down that an office worker checks his phone 52 times during the day, an average in the US of 56 minutes a day are spent by workers doing non-related work activities during work while they're being paid, okay? So for example, uh, Twitter, or X for those that know what this is, so Twitter gets approximately 500 tweets every 500 million tweets every single day 500 million tweets a day we're talking about 6000 tweets per second right 200 billion per year right and how much of this is going on during work time how much of this is going on while a person is being paid to work in an office right in 2023 the average person spends two hours and 31 minutes on social media per day. Now you may say, well, that's at night when he's going to sleep or waking up in the morning, could be. But how much of that time is being spent during the day? 49% of people check social media multiple times during the day. And in fact, 70% of people that use social media will check their accounts within 10 minutes of waking up in the morning. Many people are familiar with this. Those that wake up, those for shachwes, are familiar with those checking their accounts within 10 minutes of waking up in the morning. YouTube is used 1 billion hours per day. Per day, one billion hours of being watched. Now again, you could say, that's for people that are not working. Maybe they're, I, I don't know. Who knows? But maybe there's a lot of those hours that's going on during the day. News in the US, average in the US, 70, 70 minutes per day, people are watching the news, people are following the news. So Rabbi said, so we have a very serious thing over here. We can see that, we can see the numbers, they're crazy, crazy large numbers over here of people using their phone, social media, and this is without a simple phone call to their wife in the middle of the day saying, how are you doing? Or checking up on the kids or whatever else that they may be doing with their banking and other things that are, you know, not even to be the social media. We're just discussing the social media. So the question is what's going on? In 
fact, there was a study that was made that 63% of people openly admitted that they spent 45 minutes on using X or Twitter um, every single day during work, during work time, 45 minutes a day during work time. And that would be basically that if you make a cheshbon, if you make it more average, you know, work it out to be and have a lunch break and whatever it may be. So work out approximately per worker around 20 minutes just on Twitter, which means if you have a company of 30 workers, that means you are losing per week 50 hours of work. That's a lot. Now you may say it's only a minute here, it's only a minute there, but again, it adds up and the boss is for sure going to be mukbid on that many hours from that many people. And that's only if you've got 30 workers, if you've got many more workers, then obviously it's a whole different situation. So at the end of the day, we're dealing with something that a person has to realize is very, very serious. The Rambam goes on to say that an employee is obligated, is a chayiv, to give his maximum to, um, to, his, to his boss. Not only, he says, in, uh, quant in, in quantity, but also in quality. It has to be both. While at work, he's meant to be spending the time that he's being paid for per hour, or the time that he's there for his work. In fact, the Magid Mishnah, anyone knows the Magid Mishnah, always brings a source, um, a marmokim, a, 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 a makor, for that which the Rambam said. So the Rambam that just told us that every worker has to give the maximum for his boss comes along the Magid Mishnah, normally gives a marmokim a source, doesn't give a source say, it says Vzeh Poshet. Like it's so simple, I don't have to give a source for this. I don't have to give a source that you have to go, if you're being paid by your worker, that you have to give him the maximum in that case. I want to tell you, I'm not sure of the Orch HaShulchan, right? The Orch HaShulchan over here, in Chosha Mishpat 7, Shin Lamad Aleph, Ois Gimel, with the, 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 the Aruch HaShulchan says at the bottom of it here, he says, at the bottom of the thing, he says, How important it is for a worker to do his work correctly, in the right way, or ma'oid ma'oid, Lashon of the Aruch HaShulchan, Srichin HaPoilim Nizoybezeh, very, very careful, says the Aruch HaShulchan, that you have to be, when you are being paid for your work, to make sure that you do it in the correct, trustworthy way. How great is a person that works in a trustworthy way. Hear this? Greater than the schus of avois. And of course, the Rachel brings many rayas for what he just said. So, Rabbi Sai, it's a very, very serious thing. It's a very important thing as well. How much does a person have to be careful? That's a good kasha. The Gemara, famously, in Makkas Chovdalad, brings the case of Abba Chilkia, right? Abba Chilkia, they used to call him a poyal tzedek. He was a worker that was trustworthy, Be'emunah. And the Gemara says that we called him that because he was so makpid on his time. Ad Gedekah, the Gemara brings a tiny Chov Gimel Nomad Aleph that they, somebody came over to say hello. He didn't even turn around to say hello. And they said, excuse me, hello. <laughs> we said hello to you, why didn't you answer us? He said, because, they asked him afterwards, of course. He said, because I was being paid by the hour. So I haven't got time to say hello. I can't steal from my, my boss. Now, again, you may say that's a bit crazy because it's hello. But again, he's called a poil tzedek. Right, look up the Gemara Makas Chavdal, it's unbelievable. A person has to know that when you're being paid by the hour, when you're being paid to be somewhere for a certain amount of time, you have an obligation for a person to do that in a correct way. So you may say, okay, fine. What about, for example, a mitzvah? What about a campaign? There's a major campaign going on. I've got to send out the WhatsApps. I've got to put on the status. I've got to do campaign work. It, it's a mitzvah. What do you mean? I said it's doing work, but it's a mitzvah, right? Listen to this lotion of the Messiah Sashon. Messiah Sashon, the Heilige Ramchal, in Perik Yun Aleph. Uh, he goes on, you can go pages and pages of the same idea. But look at uh, just one thing I want to mention to you. He talks about the idea of doing uh, mitzvah things during your time that you're being paid to work. Mitzvahs. I'm not talking about Devirishos. I'm not talking about Twitter. I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm not talking about the news. I'm talking about doing mitzvahs. Zuk the Ramchal. V'loy oid. El ha-shafilum asa mitzvah b'zma malachtoi. Even if you're doing a mitzvah. At the time you're meant to be working. Loy litztoke te choshev loy. It's not a mitzvah for you. El ha-veiru It's an aveira. 
That's all. Poshut Psak from the Ramchal. It's an Avera. Shein Avera Mitzvah. He brings Raya's and he goes on and on and on to discussing how careful a person has to be. That when you're paid to do something, how careful does a person have to be? Now, of course, you may say, does that mean I can't take a lunch break? What am I meant to do? Shein Achanami. There's Menagamokoim. Even by law, many places have a chiv, an obligation to give their workers a certain amount of time, whether it's for lunch break or whether it's maybe even calling and whatever it may be. And Echanami, if you have that stipulation of that's the minig in your company or where you're working and that's understood, then it's okay. Then Echanami, it's like, for example, the post can say that even though the Gemara says that now you know, you're not allowed to bench a full benching, it doesn't even take that much longer. But you know, how long does it take to bench anyway? But theoretically, imagine if we were being moitzi somebody else and we had to actually say every single word loud, oh, then it would take us a while, right? When we're being mighty somebody else, all of a sudden, no, I need a bencher. Oh, but you bench every day, no, no, I need a bencher if I'm being mighty someone, right? So it takes time. So imagine if you're doing that, right? The Gemara says you're not allowed to do that during the day. Why? You're being paid, you can't bench. So you make a kids' version of benching, a kids' version of Shemun Esra, Why? Because you're being paid. So you understand that Hazal took away from benching the Shemun Esra, the highest thing in the world, benching a Daraisa. Why? Because you're being paid. And Echanam, we don't do that nowadays. Aruch HaShulchan says that cleaning Choshe Mishpat. We don't do it nowadays because Adai to Hachim, people hire workers, they understand, they need to bench, they need to have mincha. That's fine. But there are certain things that are understood that in Echanam, providing a break is many times according to the law. Considered to be very, very important. I want to reach a lotion of the Me'iri. The Me'iri is in Baba Kama. Kuf, Yud, Tes, Omen, Base. The last Me'iri in Baba Kama. Over here. The Me'iri says like this. Um, Make sure you do your work trustworthy. The person only has a good name from that which comes out from that which he does, his actions. Says the a person when he acts in work is very much going to come back to him after 120 years it's recorded be very careful what you do you acquire a shame toy that will go in front of you your entire life and after you leave this world according to what you do when you are in work and this doesn't only mean if you own a company and you own a business and you own a warehouse but who are then if you're being paid to be a lifeguard or whatever it may be over the summer it's the same halacha the same din in this case. By the way, anyone that learned Yushalmi in Masechta's Demai, Yushalmi brings also from Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan met a Rebbe who was teaching children and he saw the Rebbe that he looked a bit shvach. He said, is everything okay? He said, Avada, everything's kavaldic. I fast every day. I'm a, I'm a preacher the Kayid. I fast. He said, Asa, you're not allowed to do that. So what do you mean? Kedusha, Taharim, I'm getting there. Chassidus, come on. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. Zog the Yushalmi, look it up, Demai, unbelievable. Perek Zayin, Rabbi Yochanan says you are a Rebbe of Talmidim, of, teach, of kids, you cannot do that. In fact, the Halacha says in Shulchan Aruch, Ramach, Hashem, Mishpah, Aruchayim, that a Rebbe also has the same, don't think that if you're in Kli Kodesh, that you have a Heta. No, no, no. If I care, you have more of a Chiyah, because you're teaching, and therefore you have to be healthy, and therefore you have to be well, and you have to be awake, and you have to be with it. You can't go along and do your, your, your precious and whatever you need to do on the Cheshbon of your Talmidim and everything else. And therefore, Ramah talks about going to bed late at night. You have to be careful. If that's going to affect your next day and it's going to affect your performance and share or whatever it may be to your Talmidim, that's also, you're not allowed. There's halachas over here when a person is working and being paid to do something. How careful he has to be. So Rabbi Isai, I cannot tell you in this specific place what is muta and what is asa. Because every work is different, every expectation is different, every boss is different. But as a paid worker, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we have to be sensitive to the idea and the realization that this is so choshev, this is part of choshev mishpat, this is part of halacha, it's shochan aruch, that a person has to know that he's being paid per hour or being paid to be at a certain place for a certain amount of time. During that time, use your time correctly. Be called poyal tzedek v'doiva emes bilvavoy, be an emes tzedek yid, emes tzedek a person, do your work correctly. And like the Meiri told us in Baba Kama, the shame toy that you acquired from that is unbelievable. Have an amazing day.